One day, back in the 1970s, when I was seven years old, I drew a picture of what I imagined was someone from the future. I folded it up, put it in an envelope and posted it. Addressed to Tharg at 2000 AD, a sci-fi comic my older brother loved. A few weeks later, I received a letter posted through the front door. Quite an exciting thing back then. I opened it and it read, Greetings, Earthling. Thank you for your picture. Unfortunately, we cannot print it at this time as it is programmed for many light years to come. We will keep it secure in our memory vault until then. Splundig Verthrig Tharg. I later found out that meant farewell. That letter was significant. I kept it close for many years in a box on a windowsill in my bedroom. It seeded in me a story of belonging to this planet Earth. To be an Earthling. To be part of a wider community of life. More than just human. And secondly, the idea of looking ahead to the future while living life today. To have an eye on the future. I've spent much of my working life looking ahead to the future, trying to anticipate what is unfolding and what that might mean for our lives. For many years, I did this mainly on behalf of business, thinking about the future for the profit motive, helping brands imagine, create and sell new things for people to buy, to make our lives better, more exciting and more convenient. It's astounding what the human species can imagine and bring into this world. In 2006, I fell down a climate change hole while researching a project. I've never really come back up. But it was being introduced to a project called The Great Acceleration, where my anxiety and inquiry about the future really deepened. You kind of need to look at The Great Acceleration visual, as it's the visual that expresses everything you kind of need to know. I'll link to it in the show notes. But one side of the visual of The Great Acceleration plots the exponential growth of human activities, the surge of socio-economic activities on our planet since the Industrial Revolution, while in parallel the other side of the visual plots the impacts of those activities on our Earth systems. So what are Earth systems, Dan? Well, Earth systems are complex living systems. They include the atmosphere and the biosphere, ecosystems like the ocean, the ice caps, the rainforests. I think of them a bit like the vital organs in our body. They control temperatures and regulate stable climatic conditions. Together, they maintain the overall health of our planet. What the Great Acceleration shows us is that as we've accelerated the development of extractive, materials-led, energy-intensive, productivity-driven, competitive economies and ways of organising ourselves on this planet, in almost perfect and chilling symmetry, we've accelerated the warming, pollution, depletion and destruction of our complex living Earth that supports all life, including human life. It reveals the hidden consequences of modern human activities on our planet, of everything that we imagine, create and do in this world, of what happens through us. And in the last 60 or so years, the most profound shifts in the relationship between humans and the natural world have occurred in that we are transforming this earth at a system level. And what this revealed to me is that a big part of why we're in this climate and ecological crisis is because we're dealing with a story crisis. Because you see, stories are powerful technologies. The stories we live by every day shape and inform the world we see, how we organise ourselves and how we design our lives. And there's one particular story that has informed how we have designed and shaped our modern globalised systems and cultures, especially here in the Global North. 
It's a story that you'll come across everywhere. It's in media, politics, business, education, entertainment. It's only really a few hundred years old, which is just a few minutes when you think of our evolution in Earth time. The story goes like this. We humans are separate from all other life, from nature, the environment, the more than human world. We humans are separate from all other life, from nature, the environment, the more than human world. We exist apart from it, above it almost. The story says, nature's over there. It looks lovely. It's a bit dangerous, the wilder stuff. It's other species, but not as evolved, intelligent or as important as humans. It's resources that we can extract, exploit, manipulate and control. The story says it's normal for humans to do this and essential for prosperity and progress. The story has expanded over time to say, we're not just separate from nature, but we're also separate from each other. We are individual selves born to compete with each other and get ahead, battling it out in a zero sum game to be productive, because that's how we measure success. Maximizing and monetizing, accumulating and growing faster and faster, infinitely, forever. And in this story, the very qualities that have been crucial for our evolution as a species, such as kindness, compassion, empathy, care, love, cooperation, diversity, creativity, community, responsibility, imagination, are seen as soft, weak, inhibitors to success. And so today, despite the endless headlines and code red warnings from our leading scientists, of climate and ecological breakdown, mass species extinction, toxic air, water and soil pollution, ocean acidification, floods, heat waves, wildfires, melting ice caps, of extreme inequalities, social and racial injustices, chronic stress-related illnesses, and let's not forget COVID-19, we still continue to design, organise, develop, govern and educate based on a story that we are separate from nature and separate from each other. What I've come to believe, along with many others, is that this story of separation is not compatible with maintaining a healthy living planet. A planet able to support healthy human life. This story is not compatible with life itself. The story of separation is now dangerously flawed. It's become a horror story. Our Earth's systems that have taken hundreds of thousands of years to form are beginning to unravel in just a few generations. Our Earth's systems that have taken hundreds of thousands of years to form are beginning to unravel in just a few generations. When I think back to when I was seven and drawing the future, I couldn't have imagined that the very conditions that sustain life itself would be at risk in just 40 odd years. And to make this even more peculiar, if you ask someone to close their eyes and think of where they feel most happy and content, something I've done with hundreds of people over the last decade, 90% of them will think of a place within nature, a more than human context. That's where they feel most happy, most content, most at ease. 5% will talk of being with loved ones and the other 5% will say in their beds, but nearly all talk of the natural world. That's the happy place. No one, by the way, says going to work, buying stuff, being on the internet, driving cars are the happy places. Literally never mentioned. Is this not staggering? That the very parts of our world and lives that make us the happiest, that we cannot survive without, are being rapidly destroyed through things that don't even make us happy. 
And what makes this even more surreal, or exciting perhaps, is that this is all just based on a story, dreamed up and imagined by humans. Or as someone once said to me, a spell. Cast just a few hundred years ago by a small group of mainly European men about humans being separate from all other life and masters over nature. Which, by the way, at the time, maybe made total sense and eventually led to the Industrial Revolution. Still with me? Okay. I believe we're entering a lost phase in the human story. Something has gone deeply and terribly wrong. Do you feel it? The story of separation no longer makes any sense. It's shaped a globalised culture built on extraction, transaction and distraction. It's a horror story. It's dividing us and destroying life. And if we destroy nature, ultimately we destroy ourselves because nature is our family. We are a part of nature, not apart from nature. What if these times are calling for new stories to live by? Love stories. Grounded in a renewed understanding that all life is connected. Because the leading edges of science are now converging with ancient wisdom and what our indigenous brothers and sisters have always known. All life is interconnected, interdependent, in relationship with everything else. A vast, diverse, extended family of life. And therefore human health and the health of our planet are intimately entangled. We cannot have one without the other. Let me share just one story that fascinates me. This is us. All of us, right there. Everyone and everything that ever was, every species we know of, every bit of history we were told, every story ever shared happened on here. We live here, on this life-giving rock called Earth, hurtling through space. Wow! Like a spaceship, we have a finite amount of supplies with an intelligent operating system that keeps everything replenished as long as we all respect it and use wisely. The analogy of the Earth as a spaceship is well documented. Bucky Fuller said we're all astronauts. Marshall McClellan said we're all crew. This fascinated me. This idea of crew spoke of adventure, community, participation, co-creation and being in service to something bigger and mysterious. But once I began to dig more deeply, it appears that our current human mode on Spaceship Earth is in fact a passenger one. You see, passengers are distracted. We don't notice much. We're always rushing around. No time to pause and reflect. Not really aware of others. Passengers are quite entitled. We expect and demand a lot. Passengers are greedy. We want more and more and bigger and better. Passengers are messy. We create a lot of waste and expect others to clear it up. Passengers are passive. Someone else is at the wheel, we're not looking where we're going and we're not aware of what's coming down the line. The passenger story is based on extraction, transaction and distraction. While the crew story is based on connection, cooperation and participation because it seems that the actual crew on Spaceship Earth right now, keeping us flying a healthy planet, are the more than human. Remember those Earth systems? Yeah, nature is currently flying the spaceship. A vast, diverse web of species, ecosystems and living places. An extraordinary array of intimate relationships and interdependence, which in its total wholeness and unknowable complexity, co-creates the conditions for all life. Let's look quickly at three crew from our more than human family to see this in action.
Think of these three species, the whale, the krill and the phytoplankton. Each of these is stunningly different, unique and diverse. Now let's look at what happens through them. Some refer to this as the poop loop. The whale is doing awesome dives, singing incredible songs and generally living life large. Feasting on krill and through that begins to poop. Highly nutritious poop into the ocean, like a great big ocean composter. And here is the phytoplankton, a micro plant algae with extraordinary, slightly geeky innovation and scientific capacities that snacks on the whale poop and also sucks CO2 out of the atmosphere and produces oxygen. Not just a bit, but at least 50% of the oxygen we all breathe. Every second breath you take down to these creatures. And then here come the krill, just krilling around, munching on the phytoplankton. And then the whales eat the krill. The whales then sequester all the carbon dioxide in their bodies. And then when they die, they take that down onto the ocean floor. At species level, we're talking millions of tons of carbon. This is a circular economy like no other. Radically diverse, beautifully weird individuals, each with their own unique gifts, living their own story, but in meaningful relationship, connection and cooperation with other life around them, with others not like them, working together to create the conditions that benefit everyone, all life, the whole, now and way into the future, truly in service to life. Powered by reciprocity, generosity. That's right, it's all a gift. No one gets paid any money and no one is told what to do, but everyone has what they need to flourish. Radical, spontaneous cooperation. What if we applied this level of creativity, care and cooperation to reimagine our human systems and ways of organising ourselves on this earth so that we bring life back? We bring love back. We bring health back to ourselves, to each other, to our communities, to nature, to the more than human world, to our Earth systems, the vital organs of our one and only planet Earth to which we all belong. Can you imagine being part of that story? So what can we learn from our more than human crew to help us navigate a way forward in these extraordinary times? Here's three things I've observed for starters. Love as a guiding principle, not in a romantic way, but attention, connection, curiosity for all life, empathy, care, and critically in these times, courage for spontaneity and trust and confronting our fears, differences and vulnerabilities together. Putting the young at the centre. All more than human life appears to put the young at the centre of everything. To listen to, nurture and protect the young seems to be the core foundational practice of all species. Imagine what might happen if we really listen to our young and put their dreams and visions at the centre in these times. especially the indigenous and marginalised, who have suffered the most from the story of separation and from whom we can learn so much. Cycles of life. Everything exists with cycle and pattern. Seasons, solar cycles, lunar phases, tides, ebbs and flows. Nothing apart from the modern human attempts to live at warp speed and continuous eternal growth. What if we slowed down, letting go of our fossil fueled speed addictions and began to sync with the great rhythms and patterns of this earth that have always informed and guided life? And the most important cycle, birth, death and renewal. Things are born, they die 
and then become compost for the new. We need some things to die right now. Stories, behaviours, systems, industries that we now know are destroying life and dividing us. Imagine if we did that with compassion and respect, not judgment and blame. What might emerge from the compost? None of this requires any new technologies. It's in us all already. And it's 100% renewable. So the invitation I leave you with, especially for those of us in the global north, who've been flying business class on Spaceship Earth for too long, is to step into service and help bring life back on our home planet, wherever you live, becoming crew on Spaceship Earth, where the only real things you need to consider are what happens through you and who or what will you become. If you've appreciated listening to this podcast, would you consider sharing it with a friend or others? or leaving us a rating or review via your podcast provider. It really helps more people to find us, and we'd be most grateful. You can follow us on Instagram at thespaceship.earth and sign up to our occasional newsletter to keep informed about new episodes, community gatherings, and radical learning experiences to connect us more deeply to ourselves, each other, and our more-than-human family. Sign up at becomingcrew.substack.com. Blessings to you. Thank you.